Hey guys, what's going on? So today I want to do um, a quick short file. You're actually going to see several different short files over the next um, few days. Um, one on, uh, I was going to do a uh, podcast on Star Wars and how Star Wars has kind of changed. I think I'm going to just do a short files on that one. Um, and then I also want to discuss at length um, a couple of Joe Rogan's podcasts from this past week where he had two um, two big uh, what I consider big uh, guests on there this week one was um, I think his name is Jocko something and then the other is Brett Weinstein and um, they offered some really interesting ideas about um, our current cultural moment so I want to dive into that in a short file so that'll be in the next uh, couple of days, day or so. But this one I wanted to talk about today. Um, the uh, podcast posted this morning basically sheds light on a couple of, uh, and it's podcast number two, part one of the Hate Machine series. Um, but it sheds light on a couple of things that happened this week in the press and ex and how they exposed um, how they exposed a lot of issues that we have with the national media and how the national media is just kind of falling apart, um, especially on the liberal side. I think uh, you could argue that the conservative side fell apart a couple years ago, um, but so this morning I posted, you know, the the podcast went up. Um, but then also, I posted uh, a quick little thing on our blog, um, and you can go check it out, betafiles.com, thebetafiles.com, and the article's called Bullet with Butterfly Wings, where I kind of just went off on um, the national media and stressed the importance of the local media. And while I was posting it, I... <laughs> I noticed that towards the end of the opening paragraph, it sounded kind of revolutionary you know, uh, um, and, and kind of dangerous. So I wanted to kind of clarify what I was talking about in the article so that if you go to the, the site and you just read that opening paragraph before you go into the rest of the article, you don't think I'm calling for you know a civil war of any kind. Basically, what my argument is, is that the national media machine has failed us um, as a culture. And, uh, and it's not something that you haven't heard um, from other people. It's all over the place. Um, I talk about Matt Taibbi in um, The Beta Files. There are several more high, uh, high prominent um, or highly prominent, excuse me, journalists out there that are starting to um, come out of uh, from underneath the shade of defending their um, their respective sides, and they're reporting on how the news is being reported. Um, and so this is not new, right? But and for years I have. I have championed the the idea of local news first. Um, John Oliver has done several different uh, last week tonight's on local news, um, how lo local news is being um, pirated, basically, or not pirated, how they're being invaded by national conglomerates um, that have a northeastern political. Um, uh, 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 drive, I guess you would say, um, to kind of de deliver local news with a slant towards national politics. And you, you know, the past couple years, really for the past 10 years, you've heard the question of, you know, how are local newspapers going to survive the digital revolution? Um, how are they going to survive YouTube? How are they going to survive all this stuff? where we are consuming news on all these different outlets and local news is, is really taken, has really taken a hit. 
Um, so one of the things I point out in the article is the only way we're going to get out of this current mess that we're in, and this is across the board, you know, in every all the social um, issues that we're having that we're facing right now, we're going to have to distance ourselves from the national narrative and re-engage and reinvest in local news because local news is vitally important to how you see the world um, and how you understand the world. Um, when we look at social media, social media itself, even though it promotes um, communal, community style um, ideas, the reality is is that it's all based on national narrative. The problem with that, and I've been screaming this for for years and years and years, the problem with that is we are not a common identity in this country. There is a difference between being a patriot where you are proud to be an American, which I am. I'm very proud to be. I count myself extremely lucky that I was born into this country. Um, but there's a difference between being a patriot and understanding that, yes, I am an American. I am a part of this national um, identity of Americans, but I'm also a Southerner. And I grew up in the Southeast. More importantly, I grew up in the northern half of the Southeast. I'm not from the Deep South. I'm from what has been uh, collectively over the years been considered the more progressive part of the South. Understanding that identity and understanding that that identity is one of many identities in this nation then tears down that idea that we are all one identity because we're not. And I mentioned this in the podcast, and I, I, you'll hear me say it over and over and over um, because it's, it's something that I believe we've really got to understand. Someone like me who grew up in rural North Carolina and now lives in what is considered urban North Carolina, but Greensboro is not a very large city compared to the other major cities in the nation. But, so even then we have a lot of, of rural ideas still within uh, Greensboro. And not saying that Greensboro is not progressive, because we are, um, compared to, say, something like Winston. Because we are uh, a bit more progressive than, than they are. Um, and we're definitely more progressive than if you look at something like where I'm originally from, which is Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, or Mount Airy or uh, Elkin, or Dobson, or Danbury, or King, or Walnut Cove, or, you know, and I can just list, keep listing all these smaller communities in the northern, uh, northwestern part of North Carolina, and that's how I'm getting into the mountains, where you have Wilkes, uh, Wilkes County, Watauga County, Ca um, well, Caswell County is more central, but um, Yakin County, those kinds of things. All those counties are, you know, up in the Blue Ridge, but um, but I don't see the world the way someone from, say, Dallas, Texas, sees the world. They grew up in a different area of the country with different values, with different uh, understandings of the world. And neither one of us see the world the way someone from Detroit sees it. Or someone from Bismarck, North Dakota sees it. Or someone from uh, Boise, Idaho. Or Denver, Colorado. We all see the world differently dependent on where we are regionally. Because the regional politics are much different between the, two re between the different regions. And I'm not saying that we need to get to this point where we, you know, if you're from the Midwest, the Midwest is best. No, that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we need to focus on the things that matter to us on a local scale 
and distance ourselves from this national narrative which has created so much poison that local problems and local issues and local concerns have taken have taken on the national identity I'll give you an example several years ago when ISIS was just really starting to get going Fox News reported that um, there were there was the huge possibility of ISIS cells in America and that ISIS was going to try and attack us from within if you live in a large urban city this is newsworthy because where are they going to attack they're going to attack the larger cities if you're in Atlanta if you're in New Orleans if you're in New York DC Philly um, LA Seattle those are prime targets that makes sense that headline makes sense however Fox News doesn't just broadcast to the major metropolitan areas of this country it also broadcasts to the smaller rural areas of this country and my mother is in her 70s lives in Pilot Mountain still Pilot Mountain is like a town of like a couple thousand it's not very big it's a very small town very small community it's one of those communities where most everybody knows everybody else okay they park they still to this day park tractors on Main Street okay they will just drive their tractors down into town go to the hardware store get back on their tractor and go back home it is not uncommon to see that at all in pilot on any given day of the week so she gets a hold of this Fox News comes through her TV and there it is the warning about Isis so of course my mother is freaking out and so I talked to her and I'm and I can tell she's very anxious and I'm like what is going on what is happening and she tells me about how she had been watching Fox and Friends and they had just hyped this thing about Isis coming in and possibly working inside and she was terrified of the fact that you know Isis was going to destroy Pilot Moon so I had to calm my mother down and tell her and ask her straight up you know what in Pilot Mountain do you think ISIS wants? And the answer is nothing. There is nothing in Pilot Mountain or King or Walnut Cove or Danbury or Elkin or any of those smaller towns up, up there that ISIS really cares to have. They don't care. But because she had seen it on Fox News, she was convinced ISIS was going to destroy, you know, Bowles Hardware. Uh, which, if you don't know, is a hardware and grocery store put together with a clothing, with a small clothing store in the back that uh, that will sell you Carhartt and Pointer brand clothes. That's Bowles Hardware. But she just knew ISIS was going to take, you know, something uh, important to her like that out, or they were going to nuke, you know, the seventy-member Baptist church um, that was right that's right behind it that's the problem that is the serious problem with national news the other thing that um, here's another example this goes back even further beyond uh, before the ISIS thing in um, the late aughts early 2010s North Carolina passed what was known as amendment one and what it was was it was an amendment to our Constitution barring uh, homosexual marriage so they were taking it was a Republican political ploy is all it was in uh, in North Carolina so I was talking to my mother one day and of course she was just losing it over this amendment one and I asked why what are you afraid of and her answer was they're going to make us marry them in our church now if she had been part of um, a large um, 
like Unitarian or uh, or um, Presbyterian or uh, well, not necessarily the Presbyterians. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, larger progressive church. If she'd been part of a larger progressive church, I would understand her concern. But my mother goes to these. And I say this with love in my heart because I grew up in these churches. But she goes to these backwood, small Baptist churches that everyone knows in that area are hellfire and brimstone uh, style churches. Okay? And so I had to, to tell my mother to try and allay her fears. Mama, no homosexual in their right mind is going to go to one of those kind of churches and demand to be married in it. But between Rush Limbaugh and Fox News and Laura Ingram and all those major conservative players who are peddling a national narrative, my mother was convinced that uh, as she put it, the gays were going to make them marry. We're going to force these small backwood Baptist churches to marry them. A lot of this is just common sense, right? And there, and it's not just the conservative media, because the liberal media has now taken that mantle. To the point where I work at, at a community college and there is, you know, it's not an un, uh, uncommon thing to hear that style of rhetoric and that style of fear and anxiety from very hardened, left-leaning individuals where the fear is an unfounded fear based on urban politics and urban concerns that don't apply to where we are in the nation. So what I propose, what I proposed in that article and what I propose here in this short file is we have got to cut ties with the national media. And we do that where it hurts. You don't do it by, by storming CNN or MSNBC or Fox News. You stop watching. If enough people stop watching, we'll get their attention. The other thing is canceling the subscriptions to whatever subscriptions you have that are tied to national media outlets. Get rid of them. Take that money and invest in local news operations where the money would be better spent. And the other thing that we need to do and we need to understand as a culture is that if you live in North Carolina, a senator from Kentucky has no business being in all of your news feeds. The senator from North Carolina should be in all of your news feeds. What is he doing? The representatives that represent you in the House on in uh, D.C., they're the ones that should be dominating our headlines in our local newspapers and in whatever outlets that we're using for the news. What some idiot from the 5th Congressional District of South Carolina has to do with my life is nothing. It doesn't matter. We've got to start focusing on the local. We have been so consumed and so taken over by the national media and by the national narrative from both sides that we have forgotten that our neighbor is our neighbor. And instead, if our neighbor is politically aligned with something else that goes against what we politically believe, 
that in, that neighbor now becomes our enemy. They are not our enemy. They are our neighbor. They are part of our community. And if we want our communities to be strong, we're going to have to get rid of this stupid narrative of left versus right and focus on our community versus survival. That's, that's the real fight. How are we going to strengthen our community? How are we going to make our community better for everybody involved? <coughs> and like I said, in the article, I go into detail on a couple of ideas that I've that I threw out there, but um, it's just, it's it's getting out of hand. It's gotten way out of hand. And this is not a new problem. This has been going on for, for decades now, and it's time to put an end to it. I think um, the George Floyd um, incident, the George Floyd murder, has exposed not only the frustrations, the final um, push against, uh, or the final frustrations from the black community and exposed just how ridiculous we have been by digging in, but it has also exposed how the national media, and this conservative and liberal, how the national media has completely and utterly failed us as a nation and a culture. And it's exposing a lot of rifts that have been there for a very long time, a lot of prejudices that have been there for a very long time, and it's exposed a lot of the issues that they're ignoring that can be easily resolved if we had a focus on local press coverage, on local issues. If you want to fix America, and you want to end systemic racism, it starts in the community you live in. The Minneapolis Police Department has no jurisdiction in Greensboro, North Carolina. So we need to focus on the Greensboro Police Department. What have they done? How do we get them to change? Gentrification in New York City has no bearing on Greensboro, North Carolina. What about gentrification in Greensboro? How do we fix it? How do we undo the problems of it? We need to start focusing on our local communities first and foremost, and hold the national narrative at arm's length. I don't care if Mitch McConnell gets reelected or not. I care if Tom Tillis gets reelected, because Tom Tillis is the senator here. And the next one who comes in, if they don't do what is best for North Carolina, they will be removed. And we will continue this cycle, as we have always done, until we get somebody who will focus on the matters of this state. When we elect a representative, we need to make sure we elect a representative that's not going to toe the party line, but is going to focus on the problems of Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and High Point. Because if they're not going to, they don't need to be there. I don't care what Pelosi's doing. I don't care what AOC says. She's not my representative. I care what my representative says. So, there's my two cents. Make it a great day. Um, like I said, I got a couple more coming. One on Star Wars and one on Joe Rogan and a couple of his podcasts that he had this week that I just want to comment on. So, there you go. Peace.